All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. In this video, we're going to do some reinforced concrete beam analysis, and in particular, we're going to calculate the design moment strength of a given singly reinforced concrete section. Where the word "singly" just means I have a single layer of steel in the tension side of my beam here, and that all that steel is made of grade 60 steel, and the concrete here is composed of 4 ksi concrete. The way I'm going to go about doing this is really the first thing I always want to do to when I analyze a reinforced concrete section is draw that strain and stress profile. Now when I draw the strain and stress profile the way I want to get started is to draw these lines that extend out from the top and bottom of my reinforced concrete section and then draw vertical lines here. The first line here is going to be my strain profile and the second line here is going to represent my stress profile. The one thing you all can always hang your hat on in reinforced concrete analysis and design is that the strain is linear. So it would look something like this. And what we know at the for the design moment strength, or which is at the nominal strength, or which really is at this condition of being ultimate, if you will, the ultimate failure of this reinforced concrete section, that implies that my concrete crushes in compression. Here at the very top, this point of my section right here is experiencing the ultimate compressive strain, epsilon Cu, which depending on the code you're using in the ACI code, it's 0 0.003 strain is the definition for concrete crush. And so at this point right here, the very extreme outer fiber is crushing. And that's the one value that you know for the strain profile. And you know, also know that it's linear. Things that we don't know and that we're going to need later are the strain strain in the steel here and the depth of the neutral axis from the extreme compression fiber which this is the neutral axis where I have zero strain and it's a good idea to draw normally a horizontal line all the way across to about there this distance I'm going to label this as the depth CNA I have my strain in the steel that's going to look like this this is what my strain profile looks like at ultimate. Next thing I want to do is draw my stress profile. And I'm going to use the equivalent stress block or the Whitney stress block here and to represent my compression of the concrete I have right here. And this is a state of stress. And the stress is 0.85 FC prime. And here, the depth of this equivalent stress block is usually given by the variable A. For the steel, within the steel here, I have a stress of the steel, and I'll just draw a single line for that, the stress in the steel, and I'll call that Fs. And each of these have, each of these stresses have resultants, which I will put here. This would have a resultant, I'll put a wavy line, I'll call that the res compressive force in concrete, C sub C. This wavy line for here would be the tensile force in the steel. The C sub C is at this distance right here, would be the central of my compression block, which in this case, because it's rectangular, it just happens to be A over 2. This 21 inches is the depth to steel right here. And so this distance right here, the distance from the to the steel to the neutral axis, D minus CNA. And then this distance here between the two force resultants is D minus Y bar. Some people would call this, depending on the textbook that you're looking at, they'll call this as Z, which is D minus Y bar. And Z is just a generic symbol to represent the arm between these two force resultants. And what you're really solving for in this problem is this nominal moment M sub N, the equivalent nominal moment due to this force couple if you will. And so if you can draw the strain and stress profile, then you're not going to have to ever memorize any equations. It, with that equivalent stress block, I just want to clarify this. This A is equal to beta 1 times C. And beta 1 depends on the concrete compressive strength. Now, if you can believe or if you agree with the strain and stress profile that I've set up here, then the next few steps are, are pretty straightforward. And so the next thing that we want to do is determine the neutral axis location. Now, the way to calculate the neutral axis location is from equilibrium or from force equilibrium of this section over here. If I apply some of the forces in the horizontal equal to zero, then I would just get T sub S is equal to C sub C. If I look at this a little closer, this force resultant is going to be the volume of the stress block. You know, this is a, a profile of the stress which is spread out over this volume over here. So I'll just shade in the area that's in compression. And here is my area in compression, and this depth is A, and this width is B, and the volume of the stress block is just the stress times the area here. And so if I substitute for this C sub C here, I would get 0.85 FC prime 
times the area in compression. So I'll just leave it generically as the area in compression. For T sub S, it would be the stress in the steel times the area of the steel. Now we're going to make an assumption here to calculate the neutral axis, we're going to assume the steel yields. And when we assume the steel yields, that means Fs is equal to Fy, or in this case, grade 60 steel of 60 KSI, but we won't substitute numbers yet. And so here, this Fs is Fy As, which is equal to 0.85 Fc prime. And I know that the area in compression right here, this red area, is B times A. And what's more, oh, don't forget here, this is actually a C and A. Right here, this, I can solve for A here now because I know Fy As Oh, I know the point A5, obviously, right? And then FC prime and B, right here, I have all these other, all these parameters are given to me. I can just solve for A. And solving for A, I would have this relationship. And if I just plug and chug into this, I have, um, let's, oh, let's go back real fast and talk about what this AS was. AS, the area of steel, is three number nine bars. So it's three times the area of a number nine bar. And a number nine bar, if you don't know, is you can look up in the appendix of the ACI code, appendix E, I believe. This would be three times one inch squared. So the area of steel that's in my singly reinforced beam is three inches squared in this case, those three number nine bars. And so this would be three inches squared times 60 KSI, 0.85 FC prime times four KSI times the width B, which is 10 inches. And if I substitute and solve for this, then I'll get A equal to 5.29 inches. And now using the definition of the equivalent or the depth A of the equivalent stress block or the Whitney stress block here, which is just this is equal to beta one times C and A. I can solve for C and A. And the thing to know is that beta one is is a parameter that depends on the ultimate compressive strength of concrete or F C prime. So beta one depending on F C prime. And in general, beta one is equal to 0.85 when F C prime is less than or equal to four KSI. Between four and eight KSI, the way to the, the way I don't try to remember the equation or anything, but between four and eight KSI, really for every one KSI you have to subtract out 0 0.05 for the beta 1 and so that means for 5 K so for instance for FC prime equal to 5 KSI beta 1 is equal to 0 0.80 and then for FC prime of 6 KSI beta 1 is equal to 0 0.75 and this only works all the way up to 8 KSI anytime you have FC prime is greater than or equal to 8 KSI then beta 1 is 0.65 so here in this case, beta 1 is 0.85 because I have 4 KSI concrete. And a lot of times people get confused with this 0.85 up here. They think this is beta 1, and that's not. This, num this number doesn't change if you're using the weakness stress block or the equivalent stress block. So just be careful of that. And that makes CNA equal to 6.22 inches. And that's my neutral axis location. So the next thing that we want to do once we have this is we have to verify that this assumption that we made here. I know I, you know, I kind of glanced over it, but this assumption is pretty big. And we have to verify that that assumption is good. We need to verify this assumption that this strain in this or this steel actually yielded so that we could use Fs equal to Fy. And so in order to do that, we got to look at the strain profile. So in order to verify steel yield, we, we just have to look at the strain profile and see what the strain in steel is and see if it exceeds the yield strain, right? So is this number epsilon s greater than epsilon y? So let me show you real fast what that steel stress strain profile looks like and what we're looking for here. You know, we in reinforced concrete analysis and design, we use an elastic, perfectly plastic model, which just means that we have a bilinear material stress strain curve, which means that the steel, if this is a tensile stress strain curve of steel here, here's a stress of steel versus a strain. At the yield point right here, Fy, we just assume that the steel goes straight across right here. We never have capacity beyond Fy right here. And this value right here, is epsilon y and this has a modulus capital ES the modulus of elasticity and epsilon y we could calculate as Fy over ES from Hooke's law and this is really just 60 KSI over 29,000 KSI which is 0 0.00207 strain so if the strain, this epsilon s over here is greater than 0 0.00207 strain, then we've yielded. So let's go ahead and calculate epsilon s. And the way we're going to calculate that is by similar triangles. And we know that here, 
because we know epsilon c u, or this compressive strain 0.03, and this distance, we can use similar triangles to determine epsilon s. And so here that just looks like this. And if I go ahead and substitute some numbers, I'm going to get that epsilon s is equal to 0.007 strain, which means this number is greater than 0.002. So yes, my steel did deal, but what's more is that according to the ACI code and I think chapter 9 where you see that, you know, that fee and strain relationship, this number right here is also greater than 0.005, which means that you can use a fee value of 0.9. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, if you go to chapter 9, you'll see this drawing in the ACI 9.3.2. You'll see this epsilon t, which really just means the extreme tensile fiber or tensile layer of steel. In this case, epsilon s equals epsilon t. Here we've got this 0.65 here. If you have what's called a compression controlled, and if your strain your steel exceeds 0.005 at ultimate, then you would have a tension controlled, tension controlled beam. And the ACI code requires that all the beams that are designed be tension controlled. And in fact, really the minimum that you're allowed, legally allowed to design is this, you know, 0 0.004. This is the legal limit. You have to have a strain of 0.004 or greater according to the ACI code. What, what this says is that we have a strain of 0.007 and we are over here somewhere, which means that we can use a fee of 0.9. All right. So that's good to know, right? So that's, you know, it tells us that our, our beam has some ductile behavior going on. And really, before the concrete crush occurs, which is this very brittle event, right? If we get, we get steel deforming and yielding. So we get some sort of warning that, you know, tr failure is imminent and people can leave safely from the structure. Anyway, but this is an analysis problem, so let's keep going. So we, we want to verify this. We verify the steel yield. We, we have the neutral axis depth. And now we want to calculate the nominal moment. So now to calculate the nominal moment, I'm bringing the strain and stress profile down with me because it's such a good way to remember everything without having to memorize any stupid equations because memorizing equations is just going to get you in bad places. And, and here, you know, for the calculating the nominal moment, you just apply your other equilibrium equation that you have available to you. And you're, we're going to take some of the moments, about a point, equal to zero. That's all it is. And here, a lot of times, it's really popular to take moments about where the compression force resultant is, right about here. Okay. And so if I did that, if I took moments about this point right here, you would see that I would end up writing this, minus mn plus ts times z equals zero. Which just tells me that, you know, this just says mn is equal to ts times z. And if I go through and I substitute this, let's see, I would get what's more, I would get mn is equal to ts times d minus y bar. And I know that my steel has yielded, right, beyond yield. Uh, and and so Fs here is Fy, so Ts, the force resultant, which actually I calculated earlier, is just Fy times As, that's Ts, times D, minus Y bar, I'm using a rectangular stress block, I have a rectangular cross section, so I know that Y bar is equal to A over 2. This A over 2, it's important to know, is specific to a rectangular cross section with the Whitney or equivalent stress block, okay? You can't if you have like a triangular cross section here this you know this a over 2 no longer applies you have to calculate the centroid of this area a over b you know in this rectangle the centroid just happens to be right in the middle a over 2 so that's that's easy right so now if i just substitute i know there's too much information some of you hopefully are just fast forwarding through a lot of this stuff and this is just review but you know if you've never seen an example problem before this is probably good but here this mn is equal to 60 ksi times the area of the steel, which was 3 inches squared, times the depth, which was 21 inches, minus A, which we know is 5.29 inches, divided by 2. And if I plug and chug through this, I'll get my nominal moment is 3,303.9 kip inch. And if I convert that into kip feet, I will get 275.3 kip feet.
All right, so so that's our, our nominal moment. And the last but not least, what we have left, and it's kind of an easy thing, is to calculate the design moment because we've already done all the work, right? So and this design moment strength would just be putting phi and mn together. So phi times mn, which is just 0 0.9 times 275.3 kip feet, and this is equal to 247.8 kip feet. Yay, we're done. All right, so hopefully that was useful and very detailed for all of you who are new to Reinforced Concrete. For those of you who are looking at this for review, hopefully you just fast forwarded to the parts you, you needed. See ya.